Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and um, welcome to me, the new guy for uh, conquering the world as the Inca. I'm getting uh, awfully close to it. And so one thing you've noticed about this video is that I've managed to fix the microphone so that you can actually <laughs> hear what I'm saying now. Um, I sound deliriously happy. Um, I hope you can hear what I'm saying, otherwise I'm celebrating without cause. Um, so when you joined me last, last I just had an epic battle with the French. That was that was just oh that was painful like this. That was um, really awful. Oh, the apology, apologies if you were listening on you know, headphones or with the sound turned down for all the previous videos. And I just suddenly burst into this one with hello everybody. Um, should try not to um, not to be so um, what I'm looking for. Excited, excitable in the future. I'll, I'll keep myself. Um, I, I sort of, uh, with, a, with, a, with a modicum of um, restraint. So what I want to do is take out the Mongols. Quick. So I've got a lot of <laughs> sabotage. So I use that. Use that. Cattle's no good. Political dissidents, a bit rubbish. I'm checking to see if they've got any um, cards that I might want. Because you don't get cards from taking the capital. So what I'm going to do is going to use one of my ample treasury cards. I'm going to take one of the Oh, that was odd. Oh, I've got a supply wagon as well, so I'll just, um, or a supply centre. So I'll stick you over there. And there's my propaganda card, that's pretty good. What it does is you copy the other nation uh, in, their, in their powers, plus add your own. So if I was to go with the Mongols, I'd get some free food and a stable, my horsemen would be pretty good. Um, because that's what you know the Mongols do. Good horsemen. Now, as far as I can tell, there's no other cards I particularly want. Oh, great thinker! That's pretty good. And I can get it as well. <laughs> I'll take timber economic boom. Hmm. Is it me or have I gone mad with power? So we'll knock that down to a three, then we'll take that. And I've got a great thinker card. Great thinker cards are uh, very good. Uh, is there anything else that I want? Pacific Eureka. Silk, do I have any silk? Well, what I'm doing is I'm weakening, uh, I'm weakening the Mongols because uh, to before the big battle. Because what I realised was that the um, French are the big empire, so they had lots of rare resources, giving them bonuses. So I'm going to take some silk, which will make my commerce uh, cheaper. So I've got cheaper commerce, cheaper science, cheaper civics. And yeah, it's just going to be it's going to be a cakewalk. This next battle is. To think of actually taking everything of value. See so now this is this is how you play strategically. Look at that. Two supporting armies knocked it down to a three. I'm going to go with Science Eureka. And, um, I'm probably going to go with Propaganda as well. Which is also a thing for Night Out. Uh, I could go for uh, Mercenaries, just so I have lots of troops on hand. 
think I might do that. Now leave all these other fealties for the big battle with the Lakota. Because I'm feeling complacent. Trade embargo. That's the only that's the only card that will really screw up my attempts at world conquest now, because we've got so many rare resources that without them um, I'd you know be at a loss. Okay, so here we go. Now that I've given you a good strategic rundown, I might actually put a note in saying the battle starts at about, about 10 minutes in. Uh, so I've, I've now learned how to put little annotations in. Uh, it didn't take long, it just took, you know, some effort getting round to it. Okay, who. Oh! And he's stealing my <laughs> I'm stealing his uh, power, he's stealing mine, and he's got the power of the Iroquois. Iroquois is an interesting one. He can hide his units in his own territory and they just suddenly spring out and attack you. Um, okay, here we go. I'm going to uh, zoom out. You can go for a walk. Let me tell me what you find. I know we're at uh, our uh, commerce cap now, but we won't be at some point. And that's all the wood spent, so I'm going to spend all the food. <laughs> Population limit for me. Uh, so I might. Uh, I might research military level 1. There you go, build a temple. And when you get the chance, build a market as well. Look how cheap that is, 32, 32. That's because they've got sort of science up to level 2, plus they've got silks. Plus, I'm um, just awesome. Um, try not to be, you know, sometimes just can't help it. <laughs> joking, by the way, if I was that much of an ass. Um, I'd be asking serious questions. A couple of stockades, if nothing else, just so I can research uh, attrition. You get a barracks in there, and you get a stable in there. Look at that, it's a large city already. <laughs> Look at this difference in points. To say we're fighting for the rest of the world, more or less. Yeah, outside of the Americas. It's a bit one-sided, so I'm hoping to sort of get this finished off in one video, to be honest. Um, the risk of sounding arrogant, oh, it's a, I'd be a bit disappointed if... Um, Took much longer than that. I'm going to go uh, for some strategic. Uh, well, what's what's a good um, euphemism? Aggressive defence. I see the game's actually helped me out here by making the map a bit smaller. And being as I'm essentially rushing. Oh! Discovered the Mongols! I already knew they were there, but you know, it's nice to meet them again. Hi! You remember me? I, uh, I stole most of your empire. Soz. Oh, hello. Right, that's that city captured. So he's going to be at a bit of a disadvantage. And oh, there's some gems. So he's not going to... I'm, I'm perfectly safe now to build up my economy as I so wish. I don't think I'll subject you to that again, because that was just me, didn't he? Commerce, commerce, something that. 
U V T B I don't know. What else are you building, sissies? Be careful now that I've powered up the microphone, people can hear what's muttering. I can definitely turn that into a forward base. I think I might do that. <laughs> Since it's capitals, huh? Oh, merchants, I forgot. Two, three, four. Let's get this place um, checked out. Research Republic, Research Religion, Research Literacy, Research Agriculture, Construction, Allegiance, Railroads, Balance of Powers. Because that's the kind of area that we're in. Uh, Federalist, Federalist Papers and whatnot. Which are quite a good read. I, I have a lot of time for um, uh, Hamilton Madison and Jay. Names. Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, and I can't remember Jay's first name. It wasn't. Anyway, the important thing is not the names, but what they were saying. And they talked, and uh, Madison's famous phrase that uh, a society of angels would need no government, and ambition counters ambition. There's the other big one that people take away from it. So I need to build a temple and I want... It actually would have been quicker to just, you know, use the mouse and try and find that hotkey. And the forts... And then a second siege factory and a second stable. And a second barracks, and I'm short of wood. And since there's another city over here, I'm going to uh, give him something to think about. This is kind of like a um, a malicious rush, if you will. I'm not rushing to win the game, I'm just rushing to make them feel uncomfortable. Anyway, on to the important stuff, merchants. Like I say, me and my uh, old housemates had a little uh, game. The, person, the game was that the person who had the most merchants at the end of it won. I did quite well because I actually developed, I put in a special hotkey just so I um, yeah special hotkey that finds idle merchants it's not in the game itself I actually had to go and find it and put it in and put in a special uh, look at that I'm being attacked over there I didn't even notice how pathetic they are Uh, you went to university. Oh yeah, I start with a load of carabiners because they're sort of horse archers. And of course, that's what the um, Mongols were known for. Now the only thing I'm missing is siege equipment. That citizen didn't stand a chance. So I'm going to invest in a bundle now. And if I have time, I might go into the industrial age. As soon as my scholars get around to it. Yo, scholars, get onto it. Industrialize me.
Hmm. Right, so why have I not got, you know, a brilliant economy? Probably because I've been spending too much time just, you know, conquering. It's kind of ironic that the Mongols are building up cities and stuff, and I'm the one just sort of pinching them. And although I'm not raising them to the ground, I'm not doing them much good. Uh, you can go over there. Ooh. And probably the easiest way of building up my uh, economy. Uh, given that, you know, sort of all the ways of requiring building buildings and sending citizens places. Uh, I think I have a half mind to put them out of the misery. Supply wagons, they can just sort of stay out of the way. I guess I haven't actually built any units apart from some siege equipment. And my word, look at that for siege equipment. Right, off you go. We can take out that. We can take out. That uh, will buy a load of oil because that's just the kind of guy I am. Okay. Um, research that, research that, research that. Capitalism. I dislike the semantics of this of uh, capitalism in that you research capitalism and then your great person who was the president turns into the CEO. Now, ideal sort of corp ideal capitalism has no place for corporations uh, or very little place for corporations, and it's supposed to give it sort of a, a modern tinge. But well, what we have now isn't capitalism, and thanks to sort of. CEOs and the like, it's a, you know, kind of government funded corporatism, I guess you could call it. Um, so ideally I would have gone with something different than the CEO. Um, what do they call something else, like, you know, a robber baron, or... Um, I just don't know, what's worth just keeping it as a president? I don't guess it, it's not a government type, it's, uh, it's capitalism, it's a uh, theory of economics and the rest of, all the other four choices are, um, anyway, <laughs> finished. Uh, 14,000, I lost four units, smashing. Well, I'm going, I am going to keep this separate from the other one because I want the ink and the battle against the uh, Lakota to be like a grand finish. And the idea of getting it done in 12 minutes is pretty appalling. In fact, I don't know, but I may have spent more time, you know, talking about it. What, 788 tribute? I you know, East Asia under my rule, West Asia under my rule. I say, you gotta admire the spirit. Um, I've surrounded them, and they've only got two two things left. I don't know how they possibly hope to win the game, but they've declared war on me. In fact, I may as well keep their video running now because that last bit was so short. I may split stuff into two videos later when I'm editing, because I, you know, um, doesn't look like it, but I do actually edit these videos to a certain degree once I've done this. Okay. Mm. I don't 
No, I'm not going to spend any cards. I'm saving them all for the big battle because I want to show just, you know, how overwhelming it all can all get. And the Mongols wasn't good enough. So, here we go. We've actually gone into a battle without a long-winded explanation behind it first. Um, I'm learning. Although it's kind of irritating because i just done this, you know, about ten minutes ago. There we go. Do university... what about you? Temple, I'm all for that. So anyway, I was, I was talking about my problem with having uh, capitalism com and socialism. First of all, I won't call it socialism, call it communism. Just to, you know, just to be fitting. Because they added that bit in because they wanted to give the late game feel a kind of a later game a kind of a Cold War kind of feel to it. Because one of the Conquer the Worlds you can do is a very interesting one regarding the Cold War. And you sort of you don't attack the Soviets or the Americans playing as the Soviets. Um, directly for most of the game you sort of do police action in various neutral uh, unaligned states. But um, they sort of do these kind of conquest battles, but they're all sort of scenarios as opposed to battles. So there's some, you know, something interesting you have to do there, and all the others. And it kind of fits in because the uh, the, the communists have communism down there, and the capitalists sort of have all these things done here. Um, I think the way it works out is that further down this, the left branch uh, you go, which one's left? Yeah, the further down the left branch you go, your units are cheaper and stronger. Um, got more attack power, that is. If you go down the right, they're more expensive and not powerful in the attack, but they heal themselves and they're quite tenacious. In case we didn't even know, wondering. Can't imagine why it would be. Yeah, so then again, the Republic does kind of mer merge into democracy, I guess. Uh, despotism does merge into monarchy, but monarchy doesn't merge into socialism, just as democracy doesn't merge into capitalism. Um, So I don't know, I have a slight problem with, you know, all of that, but probably a very minor point. Oh, reinforcements have arrived. Good, uh, build a market to celebrate. And also, how many times do you send CEOs into battles to heal your troops? <laughs> why is that, why is that only just sort of struck me as a criticism? Right, so I've set that up, and I think that's more or less my economy sorted now. Apart from two merchants I'm going to set up. Hmm. You can build a third city. Research democracy, religion. Can you, can you remember just how long it used to take to get these kind of things done? Um, right, at the, right, right at the beginning of the game when I was first starting my conquests. It used to actually be a challenge. And why, oh why, did it place me next to a place for capital? Just not quite in reach of a mountain. I've got peacocks, I like peacocks. Have plus 10% of our population cap any day of the week. 
preferably the day of the week when I'm playing uh, Rise of Nations. But strangely enough, two strikers doing better than um, the Mongols were. Even though we start off with uh, less of an advantage. Okay, you can build some farms then. Three, four, five, and a granary. And do you have a lumber mill? No, you don't. You do now. And a few more citizens just to take care of it. And I imagine that ought to do it. There's some salt, there's some horses. I don't know what <laughs> don't know what my troop my cavalry is riding on at the moment then. Uh, two more caravans, research taxation, printing press, can't afford it. I really can't afford metal alloys, but I'm going to <laughs> Reminds me of a joke I um, I, I read in a um, GCSE revision guide once. Uh, There's uh, TGP guides. They used to have little jokes at the bottom of the screen. It's talking about um, alloys and the sort of what happens with them, basically, and how, how they're important. And the little joke at the bottom was. Um, most of you probably won't get this because of the international audience and not aware of the uh, the dialect dialect. But it was said at the bottom Alloys. Good to have friends from Birmingham. <laughs> first of all that joke wasn't worth the build up that I gave it, and second of all, because it was based upon the nuances of the ludicrous accents system, a series of accents that the British Isles has probably lost on most international audience. And I've checked the demographics, my audience is mostly international. Um, this past third last broadly speaking, most most viewers come from the um Oi. Pick on someone your own size. Broadly speaking most of my viewers come from the United States. Uh, then the United Kingdom second and then Assorted parts of the world after that. Well, I think that was that was quite successful. Can't follow it up because I haven't got any siege equipment. I'm going to work on that right about now. You've got nothing to do. Okay. Eight minutes in and I'm almost ready to go to the industrial age. Would have been able to do that last game had I been more focused on the economy and less focused on showing how, showing off how quickly I could finish off the um, the Mongols. Have they moved their capital? Why? I don't know really. It's because they built their senate in a different city. There's nothing strategic about it because it's not written into the AI. Um, look at that, I can't see where his territory is. I think I pointed that out before. What I do know is what my next target will be. Hmm. 
I know it's I'm enjoying just spreading out over the uh, over the map like a rash. I've changed my mind about that city. Fortunately, I hope I got all the uh, all the money back for it. Oh, look at that! I can just sort of march forward to the capital once the siege equipment arrives, of course. My word, do I have lots of siege equipment? Because that's the best way, really. I've learned my lesson from the uh, the French campaign. I need to get slightly ahead in technology so that I don't need to have numerical superiority so I can spend more on the population cap, which is already larger because I found some peacocks somewhere. Uh, so I can use that to invest more of my military in siege and less in, will you hurry up with the industrial age? There we go. I'm going to use some of my ample wealth. Arm car, light car, and the rest. Can't afford it. Why not? There's nothing to this place. Oh! Hold on a second. The nice thing they brought in with the expansion pack is it automatically zooms to the nearest oil patch. Before then you had to scroll around uh, like an idiot looking for... Huh. Okay. I'm fine with that. Largely because you haven't brought any siege equipment along with you. Now I've got news for you, pal. Why are you attacking the temple? No. Oh. Uh, the human always wins. Sometimes. That looks fairly secure. Now research this so I get some oil refineries and I won't have to worry about oil again forever. Seriously, he's not bothered? Huh. Okay, oh wait, he is bothered. Mm, need more anti-tank guns. I don't know if he's bothered or not. Uh, it looks fairly indecisive from where I'm standing. Let's get some, you know, get some tanks in. I know it's not the appropriate area for tanks, really, but well, yes, it's the industrial age. But I've only just gotten the industrial age, and it's not. I'd say it's more beginning of the war as opposed to you know, 1916, 17 when tank was introduced. Now I don't, uh, don't quote me on that, uh, I've got friends you can quote on that, various um, military historians or war studies students. to say really. Uh, research capitalism and not go on a tirade about what's wrong with calling it capitalism. 55 seconds. 
So, how is everybody? Uh, doing well? Oh, the tanks have arrived. I'm not actually near, not near my population at the minute. Not reached my commerce cap. I've not done anything really. I'm just filling this up for the sake of completeness. I've got six out of eight cities, so. You can build down there, and you. I'm building an oil refinery. Three seconds left. What a resounding success, if I say so myself. Hmm. Though I'll be honest, credit, credit to the Lakota for you know attacking in the first place. I didn't know quite what they were going to Have a look at the research. <laughs> I didn't know quite what they were going to achieve. I lost 11 units. Uh, they only lost 56, so no great, you know, battles as such. Mm. Library research 23 versus 12, 33 versus 6, and 6 units upgrades versus 0. Where's the timeline? How long does that take? 15 minutes? I think we can. I think we can squeeze this all into one big, one big video, really. So let's have a look. What does a strategic map look like? And the world has advanced to the industrial age, so everyone's caught up. By everyone, I mean the Lakota. Okay, I'm going to uh, leave it there, leave it there, and to keep the flow running. I'm going to carry on straight after this and launch into um, the battle against the Lakota just to finish this game off. So I'll see you again next time.